Thank you for clicking on. We're going to get right into it. This is uh, based off um, the book, The Art of War, which I've read a few times. I'm 52, and I've read a few times throughout my life. But you keep it in the back of your head, and then um, just looking at the signs today, um, we're going to take a few recent events in the last few years and apply them to uh, The Art of War, which is an instructional book with helpful tips on an invasionary force going to war with somebody. Basically what it gives is you want your opponent to be weak or you don't want to attack when they're strong, when they're weak. You can be, uh, you can do it through means of uh, spying and causing things to happen to the country or you can wait until the country's down itself and, and go in. Um, so I'll we'll use that book as a base point. And we won't use my political views or anything like that. I'll just go ahead and tell you I'm a libertarian. Um, I'm not a Republican or Democrat. Um, and I have my viewpoints on those parties, but but uh, but that's not going to play any part in this. And so, um, so yeah, we'll base it off that book, and we'll just look at a few um, a few recent events. So we'll go to, um, in the book, like I said, it's about weakening your opponent before you attack, so you have the upper hand. So we'll look at uh, supplies. You wouldn't want your opponent to um, have a lot of supplies or be able to get supplies to the soldiers, reinforcements, and things like that. So you might want to weaken their strategy. Um, so we'll look at how that, how that uh, if you look in our past in the United States, you will see along the eastern coast that a pipeline was hacked. So you cut off that whole pipeline of fuel. So if you cut that pipeline off of fuel, an invasionary force attacks that area, you may have the initial initial um, civilians fighting guerrilla warfare, but also militaries, National Guards, things like that. But as you, knowing that you've cut the pipeline, you put a lot of things on that you knock that force down, they're gonna have a hard time reinforcing that with supplies. Your soldiers are, you know, being getting any hot meals or getting rations, or they're basically just gonna have what they have on their back or civilians may have in their home. You're not gonna be able to get that uh, supplies to the store, supplies to the home, supplies to your, whatever you got. So you weaken that whole side. All right. and. So we looked at that pipeline was in May of 2021. That was a hack or whatever. And then let's look at uh, recently in January 2023, the FAA downed your planes. So you have a whole nation of planes down. That's another supply line or, uh, or the fact that uh, the United States commandeer those airplanes and transfer reinforcements or, or move in reinforcements, move in supplies. Um, especially if you're having uh, an invasionary force into the United States, you're not just going to be able to, you're going to rely on everything you got for survival, which would be your airplanes. I mean, your civilian airplanes, civilian pilots, everything. Um, cause a lot of your airplane builders, uh, are also military airplane builders. So a lot of your, uh, pilots were ex military pilots. So you, looking at all this. You down the, the airplanes, you down that gas pipeline. You see where I'm going with that? You've weakened your nation. Um, and I think that news article about January 2023 was basically some contractors deleted some files and it messed up the, the computer. That's about all they said. But if, uh, like the art of war and through if we look at our military past and other countries' military past from way back, the Civil War, everything on, you have spies and you implement things, sabotage and things like that. So that's one thing you may want to call upon if you're an invasionary force going into the United States or into another country or something, is you, you go ahead and you implement the, the sabotage. It could be just one person, you know, that hits delete. It could be anything. or what I'd like to go ahead and read and state too is taking advantage of a country when, and that, that'll be our next topic right now, going to their next thing, is uh, the country already weak. Or like uh, if you see in baseball, football, things like that, 
you see a lot of times you'll have two good teams going, but one team makes too many errors, and that other team takes advantage of those errors. And um, like me mentioned earlier, uh, this is based off uh, tactics of the art of war, or just any you know basic common sense tactics. Um, you would want to take advantage of those <clears throat> of those errors. And so if you look at uh, the current party of the United States, uh, they ran a primary where they made many mistakes in the primary. And then if you look at our national election of 2020, 2021, what year is it? Man, it's going by fast. But uh, I believe it was the Trump accusing Biden of cheating and things like that. And if you look at that whole mess that came out of that, that election wasn't even run good. Uh, if you look at the exit of Afghanistan, the exit of Afghanistan was not run good. You could debate on whether or not we should have exited or whatever, but if you look at how the plan was implemented, it was rough. Um, you look at other things, you know, you look at some people saying this about the border, you know, that's a, that's a Republican issue, and I guess it's a, everybody's issue, but if you look at... Um, different things like that. And if you, if you're a team going in, you say, okay, I can weaken the, uh, I can weaken the side, the, the, the invasion side, the side we're gonna invade on. And it may not even be the East Coast. They may have just checked it on the East Coast, but they're gonna use it on the West Coast. Long story, but, but the idea is, let's say the East Coast, they come in on the East Coast, all right, and we can down the plains, we can do that. And we have a, a, a leadership that's in place from the generals on up that make many errors. And so we could take advantage of that. So you have, it's like going up against a baseball or football team. You know, they got a weak flank, the players they have on there, they aren't doing good. Uh, the leadership game, pass games, they make a lot of errors. It's an easy enemy. So that's how the art of war looks at it. It's don't attack somebody that's as strong as you really or stronger. There's no need in that. What you gotta do is weaken that other opponent or attack when they're weak. So USA has down pipeline on the east, airplanes can't fly. What's another one? One is a probe the perimeter, see how strong your opponent is as far as what you are going into. Uh, so let's look at the recent weather balloons or supposedly spy balloons or whatever. Um, this would be a good, good time to go in and just kind of give an example of what would be the purpose of sending in a balloon instead of using the satellites. One is um, if you do plan an attack, you want a little bit more intel. So you have so many men down there, but they're maybe not being high, high places. They may be just a little old, contractor that hits the delete button, you know, but they may not be somebody that knows a lot of capabilities in that. So this spy balloon can come over, gather intel, but also in the process, it's checking the reaction time. So let's say you take, you send a weather balloon over, it takes four days for them to do anything about a foreign object in their skies. That balloon could cause air, airplanes, to civilians to die, to accidentally get bad and fall down. So it takes four days to do anything and they let it go all the way. Your enemy lets it go all the way over to the country and doesn't do nothing. That shows you that they're very relaxed. It shows you that your enemy's relaxed. It shows you that the leadership isn't implementing all that they have, isn't wise enough to implement all that they have. It shows you that that person's political clout or political standing is more important than defense. Like let's say, um, for instance, they weren't telling anybody about it until we actually saw it. Now it's different, but it lets the Chinese or whoever the opposing party is doing the invading know that they have four days that once something's seen or whatever, that leadership is going to react fumbly. It's not going to react. And even if they're acting, and even now I think they shot two more down or something, but they ain't told the American people what it is. They may someday, but you, 
do we trust it, you know? And that's another thing they find out with the balloon, what the trust level is, how the people feel about their leadership and all that. All that comes into play if the country's weak or strong. Um, so you find out what airplane, type of airplane struck it, what type of missile struck it, where they struck it, why they struck it. it it's so many things like that. So you realize, well, if I send five balloons across the United States, they may not strike them over land, so I can do whatever I want over that land because they're not going to hit it until it gets somewhere, until it does something. There's so many things. They're not going to send a, a jet over the United States because, I mean, that automatically says they want to go to war. So what would they probe it with? Something sweet, nice, doesn't look offensive, but still can check the reaction time, gather information, and all that good stuff. So is there signs of an invasion? Technically, you, you could say, yes, there are signs of an invasion. Um, but you could go back uh, years and years and years and pick little things out and go, those are signs, those are signs, those are signs. So each incident could be isolated. It could just be a regular hack. It could just be this and that, you know. But if you bundle them all up together, they're all in the art of war. And uh, you have to kind of, you wish there were no guns in the world. You wish everything was great. but. We do have World War I, we do have World War II, we do have, um, you know, invasions and wars we have throughout history. So you have to look at that and say, keep your guard up. And uh, lots of times the rat doesn't know it's in the trap till the lid's closing. So, you know, that's what you have to look at. And, and you know, let's look at all the, uh, just look at all the documents they found and the, and maybe they just want us to know that because they don't want none of them running for president. You know, maybe it's political, but they found all those documents and they've been laying around on people's houses. And then now you see the spy balloons, you see these uh, um, things like that going down. And the, uh, back to the weakening of the enemy, making sure the enemy's weak or is already in a weakened state. If you look at an inflation, uh, that's really getting high if you look at uh, interest rates that are being applied. But uh, also if you look at the uh, goods on the shelves, pet food, things like that, eggs, things that used to be cheap are getting higher. So even your, even people that are on a lower income level are going to be having a problem. One of the other things that is, uh, causes a country to be weak is especially in the United States, is being that we're a country that has guns in our homes. And I believe it was one of the reasons why Japan didn't attack because their soldiers would get so bogged down in the, in urban warfare and everything with, with people with guns that actually could contend with theirs. So if you have uh, politicians on the Chinese or Russia or whoever the opposing forces at payroll and they implement some of these I'm not saying there is, I'm just saying there, there are, wars are always fought with spies and different things. Or you could have somebody in the manufacturing company. A lot of these are stretched and hypothetical, but, but if you look at uh, the laws that have already passed, um, lower magazines in the home. I'm not saying there should be higher magazines or anything like that. I'm just saying this is uh, taken, in, taken in context of the past versus now. How right, how right is the situation to invade? And if an invasion force was thinking of invading, you'd have a lot of, uh, a lot of things that are happening where, where that would cause the United States to possibly look weaker than it used to be. And I'm, I'm open to saying that just because we all seen with the balloon and that, why would another country send a send a flying object over the country. It must be because they, they are taking advantage of, our, of a, what they perceive as a weak situation. So, all right, and speaking of the balloon again, here's one, here's one advantage of using that balloon is that it's good propaganda. Um, if you're attacking a force that does seem mighty, that is a strong force like the United States, 
how would you want to make it appear if you're going to if you're going to draft soldiers in your country or make them feel braver is to make the mighty dragon seem weaker than what it is. So by putting the balloon over and us not doing anything, then they can use that. I think there's actually a, a video of made up to make it look like the United States' dog fighting a balloon to make a comedy out of it. So it'll be a good propaganda source.